Hello, everyone. Uh, greetings from Nepal. I am Sibhati Kota, mycologist working at the Global Institute for Interdisciplinary Studies, Kathmandu. Today, I am excited to share the success story of our digitization project, where we describe Nepal's lichen and mushroom herbarium. So, uh, when you think of Nepal, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Just, I'm just asking, you know. So, uh, normally, uh, what most people mention uh, Mount Everest uh, or uh, Gautam Buddha, you know. So, however, I'd like to pause and take you to talk about the rich source of biodiversity and also on mushrooms and lichens. Uh, that's the fungus old. So Nepal is not just about Everest and uh, Buddha. So here, uh, Nepal goes to reach biodiversity, uh, diversity cultures, uh, and uh, unique geography. As we can see uh, here in, in this map, like uh, there are three uh, distinct geographical fields uh, on this map, uh, lowland range, uh, medium green, and mountainous uh, upper upper part, you know, mountainous part. So the shaded blue area is represent high mountains. And uh, so within this narrow elevation range, uh, we find varying climates, uh, topographies, and biodiversity. So it means uh, Nepal is truly a biodiversity uh, hotspot, I would say. Um, so just uh, zooming in on fungi, uh, let's take a look uh, at the global fungal fungi scenario. Uh, I have taken this uh, figure from the Global Biodiversity Consumption Facility websites, and which indicates that the fungal records are severely lacking in the global south, in the, in the, in the whole perspective. So um, talking about mushrooms uh, in Nepal, uh, mushroom diversity is poorly documented uh, in comparison with the higher plants or higher animals or toxic animals, whatever. So we have like only 1,291 species from uh, 180 family, 108 families and 357 uh, genera identified so far. So this is our very recent publications where we try to compile all the information related with the mushrooms. So, and we found that not really like 159 of these mushrooms are highly valued uh, for culinary purposes. Here are two beautiful mushrooms um, for your kind information that the upper one is phallus. Uh, this is quite rare in Nepal and the other is common in Midlands area and that is edible of the species. So, and they're talking about rubber lichens. Uh, uh, recently, the government of Nepal has published a new checklist compri comprising like 247 genera and uh, 1129, yeah, 1129 species. So just to add another note that in 2019, uh, Ishimo, uh, an organization dedicated on the hindu Kusimala and Bend, uh, has published a multi-year uh, assessment, you know, bringing experts all around, but sadly uh, didn't mention a single oral lichens. So there are only discussion about category fungus and more else, but not to about other mushrooms. So this also shows that uh, still we need to advocate and we need to work a lot uh, to bring this kind of, uh, un, un, I would say, uh, uh, unexplored or overshadowed, you know, overshadowed species uh, in the mainstream. So, uh, so in Nepal, uh, there are two herbariums uh, indexed by the index herbarium of which the Katke ATS, that is National Herbarium and Plant Laboratories, is managed by the Department of Plant Resources, Ministry of Forest and Environment. Uh, it has comprehensive digitization facilities uh, established uh, through collaboration with the Royal Botanical Garden, Edinburgh, UK. Uh, as a result, uh, approximately 1 million specimens have been digitized and detailed information on about uh, uh, 100,000 uh, species is available online. So uh, another notable herbarium uh, is the Tribune University Central Herbarium, uh, managed by the Central Department of Botany at Tribune University. 
It houses 22,000 vascular glands and a substantial number of cryptograms. So initially, the digitization project focused on aligned flora and uh, endemic flora uh, before expanding to include mycological digitized networks. Uh, in next, uh, uh, in Nepal, there is on solo, uh, there is only one nature museum uh, that, that is being uh, operated under the team or managed under Tribune University. Uh, primarily preserves uh, butterflies, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and several hundred uh, mushroom specimens. But there are also very few likeness specimens. So uh, with this, uh, it is clear that uh, the Nepali government has not given sufficient attention to wild mushrooms and lichens. Uh, it evidence uh, by the absence of significant insects. Therefore, our project seeks to digitize all the existing mushrooms and lichen specimens and herbarium collections uh, deposited in herbarium center and region. This effort aims to preserve the quality and the safety of these specimens and also paves uh, the way uh, for further research in various aspects. So, uh, moreover, uh, considering the looming threats of climate change uh, and species extinction, Subjectors will play a crucial role in planning for their conservation and management. Uh, thus, digitization not only involves you know, converting physical specimens into digital form, but also uh, broadens the uh, horizon at the local, regional, and global level for sure. So, uh, uh, this is our project. Uh, so, our first profile is managed under the ZBIF, BIFAC program, uh, that is Biodiversity Information for Asia. Uh, with various collaborating and supporting partners for different activities. Uh, we have like uh, universities, we have like governments, and we have like other NGOs uh, for their support. So uh, during the digitization process, uh, we implemented the following steps. Like uh, at first we started sorting and cleaning, uh, mainly at the uh, universities and Harvard University Museum of Herbariums and collections of herbarium from central and eastern parts of Nepal because uh, we realized that there are some specific groups uh, are not covered. So we decided to collect some specimens ourselves and bring under the mainstream. And we, we uh, provided barcode and stamp, and then uh, we captured data you know, from herbarium seeds, labels and envelopes, uh, photography and photo processing and other tags. Georeferencing, of course, we provided geotagging, and also um, and all, all the specimen, all the, all the specimen details were uh, prepared uh, following the uh, Darwin core format, you know, Darwin core standards, and uh, we got support from the Ishimo uh, uh, for the data hosting, you know, data hosting and uh, data publications uh, on the GBA platform. So uh, lots of work, um, and there are some pictures. Mm. So so uh, at the end, uh, these are the key highlights of our project's achievements. So lichens and mushroom surveillance from different institutions are now fully disguised. Uh, also two institutes like uh, these and the used to mediums are now um, uh, added uh, as data commissions uh, from Nepal. Uh, and also the capacity development and enhancement of infrastructure uh, development in the working stations are another um, important contributions we provided because we brought some microscopes and then uh, we brought other uh, small infrastructure like DSLR camera, you know, and other things that we provided, we equipped uh, the institutions uh, with our small supports. So um, here we see the, after uploading all our digitized records uh, to the ZB portal uh, in detail. So like, uh, so this is the record from Nepal, yeah. And also for Fungi. Uh, you can see uh, after after logging after log to the ZB uh, websites. So um, because the quality is always matter uh, in the digitization process, uh, because we realized that uh, we need to provide um, quality works. So to ensure the quality, 
we utilized uh, various freely available tools such as uh, Open Refine, you know, uh, Open Refine and Data Validator, and all the taxi treatments were performed for each species to prevent the duplications and provide them uh, provide uh, the most uh, updated uh, Latin names. So, um, like uh, missing coordinates and geographic outliers, say and if there there are any from uh, either from uh, coordinates from India or China, we we corrected them and then also. Uh, we, we had several expert consultations uh, for taxonomic determinations and confirmation and data georeferences. In some cases, we also contacted uh, already, uh, you know, uh, we also contacted collectors mm -hmm. and asked them, okay, uh, from where did you collect this? So we try to, we try to give uh, every uh, information, we try to validate every data and then we try to bring every, uh, we try to maintain quality of our uh, data sets. Uh, so here you see, like uh, we have probably six data sets. Um, so with the two lists from each institute, and these are all available on uh, GBF uh, websites. So anyone interested can download that and can zoom in. So when you assess the herbarium's website, uh, you will find comprehensive information and images of each herbarium sample. So uh, we, we have now loaded every information, every and every information from each herbarium. Uh, yeah, so uh, actually what we found is uh, this digitization project uh, focused on digitizing scattered mushrooms and lichen herbariums in Nepal. Uh, organizing them if necessary and identifying previously their uh, backlog collections. So actually, uh, while we organize the session process, uh, we also <coughs> for that. We also identified all the uh, try to identify all the backlog collections, and it is revealed the valuable uh, historical data associated with collections made in the mid uh, to late nineteenth century, uh, enriching our understanding of their origins and uh, guiding further explorations. So uh, this project also supports uh, further uh, research and policy planning in Nepal. So actually the challenges uh, we faced during this research project were mainly related to herbarium collections and uh, missing or incomplete information, uh, such as collection dates, uh, collectors, uh, field notes, uh, you know, uh, and the major nations uh, we learn is the importance of well-defined and detailed levels that are really necessary. So after this project, uh, collections are being digitized from more promptly. So, so now uh, this uh, GBF and BFA program has been uh, terminated and although this project has concluded, we continue to reflect on it. Uh, we have published available data, both from the landscape level uh, covering the Far Eastern Himalayas, uh, Northeast uh, India, Northwest Myanmar, and Southwest China, and from ecologically rich areas in Nepal, providing valuable operation data. So, actually, this program uh, opened a kind of new dimensions of publishing uh, occurrences or whatever data uh, we have uh, on the global platform so that everyone can be benefited. Uh, so furthermore, I'd like to say that uh, I have initiated a project uh, to map the underground network of mycorrhizal fungi in the Everest area uh, as a spoon uh, society for protection of underground networks program grantee. Um, this program uh, aims to map fungi from miles of hot spots worldwide, and my research will provide genetic data. So this underscores the need for ongoing collections, scientifications, and digitization processes to uncover underscore species and underscore areas in Nepal. So this is also very good uh, to inform you that so, so sooner we'll be sharing all our molecular data on the on the on this kind of platform. So uh, at the end uh, I would uh, like to express my gratitude to all the team members uh, of this project, collaborative partners, uh, funding agencies and all of you for your kind attention. Uh, many thanks also to the GBIF ACR regional support team members, uh, especially Ms. Billy, uh, for her general support in publishing data, and Dr. Vizay uh, for his support in highlighting our work here in the Nepal Malays. 
So if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, feel free to reach out to me via email, mobile, WhatsApp, or Twitter. So thank you, and I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you very much.